Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm glad to be back with you again today to share a word with you right here in my home at my desk and I pray God's blessings upon you as I share a word with you today and I want to share it in regard to the light of the Word of God. The Word of God is so important. I'd like for us to consider the fact that we need to hold forth the Word of life. And in Philippians, the second chapter, verses 14 to 16, I want to read these words. Philippians, the second chapter, it says this, Do all things without murmuring and disputing and complaining, that you may be blameless as children of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. May God bless these words to your heart and may we understand something of how it is so important that we allow the Word of God to maneuver and to direct our lives. We need to build our lives on the Word of God and that means we need to read the Word. Get that Bible out and read it every day, just a portion of it. Just a few scriptures will help you tremendously. And we need to read the Word and then share that Word with others. First of all, we, need, we, don't need, we don't need to murmur and complain and grumble. We shouldn't be grumblers and complainers. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. That means try to live without finding fault with everything and with everybody. Instead of finding fault, always look for something good and everything and everybody. And it's so much better and cleaner and brighter when you do that. And so I'm talking now especially to Christians. We ought not to be disputing among ourselves. We ought not to be arguing and finding fault. We're all the children of God and therefore we ought to do nothing without murmuring but stand together and live together for the glory of our God in heaven. Now when we do this we find strength in it. We find strength in what we're doing. I, I like the illustration of, uh, of the uh, great uh, battle uh, uh, admiral of the seas of England, uh, Lord Nelson. Uh, he, he won so many great battles for England, one of England's great naval heroes. It was said that at one time when their ships were battling against the enemy and they were both firing their cannons in, and, uh, and there was, there was you know the fire going on, and and Lord Nelson saw two of his uh, two of his officers were arguing. They were fighting. They were arguing. They weren't fighting, but they were just mad at each other. And Lord Nelson went over to him and came between them, and he said, "Gentlemen," and he pointed out there to the enemy and the bursting shells from the enemy. He says, "Yonder's the enemy." <laughs> We need to recognize as Christians, we don't need to be fighting among ourselves. The enemy is out there, and the old devil, and the world out there that would tempt us to do wrong. We need to stand together as Christians. I know there's no place for fault finding among us. We need to encourage one another. We need to be there to help one another. We need to pray one for another. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. Now what is the problem when we complain all the time and murmur and grumble? The, the problem, my dear friends, is with us. The problem is with you instead of the people that you're in the situations that you're complaining about. I, I took, I, it took me a long time as a preacher to realize that my big problem was not the member in my church, not the person down the street, not these people that were trying to bother me maybe or, or stand against me. My real enemy, I finally found out, was Yule Humphreys. He was my big problem. My big problem is self and pride. If I can get self out, then I would be more than a conqueror to him that loved me. And Jesus helps us to deny self, you see. And that's our problem. We need to, to get rid of self. If we get rid of self, that's our problem. I like the story told of the old boy that had a beard and he was eating Limburger cheese. I don't believe I've ever eaten Limburger cheese, but they tell me that it has a very strong and, and somewhat of a foul odor. And uh, the old boy was just eating his cheese. He liked it so well. 
And then he went out, left, went to work, and came back that afternoon, and he was just frowning. And uh, wife said, what's the matter? Well, he said, I tell you what, he said, the whole world, I don't know what's the matter with them. He said, everywhere I went, I could smell Limburger cheese. He said, even my people I work with, they, they just had a foul odor, oh, Limburger cheese. I met somebody on the street and talked with him, and he, he smelled like Limburger cheese. Everywhere I went, there was Limburger cheese in their lives. Uh, the smell of it. You see, his problem was the fact that he had Limburger cheese in his own beard. And so many times, we grumble and find fault out there when our problem is right in here, it's with us. So learn, as the Bible says, do all things without murmuring and without complaining and without fault finding. Be content with what you have. Be content with what God has given to you. And quit complaining about what you don't have. Oh, my friends, do that. I remember reading the story years ago of the old boy that left home in search of diamonds. He said, I'm going to find them. And he searched all over Africa and other parts of where they produce diamonds. And, and he came back home and he said, oh, I, well, all these years I've sought and I couldn't find them. And one day out digging for his garden, he discovered diamonds in his own backyard. That's just a story. But it's a good truth. And that is that sometimes when we spend our life working out there trying to get something and we already have something better than what we're looking for or just as good as what we're looking for. We need to learn to be content with what we have. God bless you. Do all things without murmuring and without, without, blame, uh, without uh, complaining and argument. That you may be, now listen, not only do we need to be without complaints and, and murmuring and grumbling, but we need, we, need to, we need to shine as lights in the world. I'm speaking to Christians. We, we live in a nation that needs the light of Christ upon us. We speak of ourselves as a Christian nation, but in many ways we're a crooked and perverse nation when it compares to the principles of the Bible and the Word of God. The Bible says that you be blameless and harmless as children of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You see, Christians, you are to shine as lights in the world. Over in the book of Matthew, in the fifth chapter, Jesus said this, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. And we do not need to hide our light. We ought to be like that city on a hill. You get night, you can't help but see it. Lights are burning, lights are flashing, and it lights up the whole hill. And that's the way it ought to be with Christians. We are the light of the world. We ought to light up where we work. We ought to light up where we live. We ought to light up where we walk and talk and live for people. Let the hand of God help us do that. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bed, but they put it on a candlestick that it gives light to all the house. Don't hide your light. Let it shine for Jesus. Let it shine for Jesus. Let your light so shine before men that, that you, they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, praise God. Little song, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, I shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bed, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bed, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, we need to shine as lights in the world. And we shine, we shine when we look to Jesus and let the Word of God be our strength. How do we shine as lights? I say this in closing. We go back to this word I first read to you. Listen to it. We are to shine as lights in the world, holding forth the Word of life. Holding forth the Word of life. And this is the way we shine is letting God's Word shine in us. 
shine in us the Word of God. And it shines the Word of God, holding forth the Word of life. And to do that, we need to read the Word and then to share the Word with others. Sometimes you'll find someone that says, Oh, I don't understand. I, I, <clears throat> I'm trying to live and do the right thing, and yet I find so many tro pro problems and troubles, and I don't understand it. You can say, Listen, the Bible says uh, that if we live for God, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer if we reign. And we need to know that everything is working for our good to those that love God. Everything is working for our good, even the things that seem to hurt us and to break our heart. Maybe you're facing something right now, dear friend, and you don't understand why it's happening to you when you're trying to do the right thing. God is purifying His gold. You are pure gold in the sight of the Lord. And you have to go through the fire. The Bible says that we're put through the fire like gold is tried. So our faith will be purified and shine for Jesus. And so we need the Word of God to help people, to help people. To know, oh, when in times of sorrow, no one loss uh, loses a loved one. We need to be able to say, Jesus said, in my Father's house, or oh, many mansions, I've gone to prepare a place for you and for yours, and we'll be together one day where there'll be one fold and one shepherd forever. Amen. We need to be able to hold forth the word of life. Now then. We hold forth the word to those of you who are not Christians. If you're not a Christian, listen. The Bible says in verse, uh, verse uh, 8, What saith the word of God? It's nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. That is, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead for you, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now maybe so. Pray this brief prayer in closing. Pray this brief prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Pray it out loud and know when you ask God to forgive you and Jesus to come into your heart. Pray it like this. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He paid for all my sins on Calvary. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Oh God, have mercy. I believe and I'm saved forever and I'm forgiven. Praise God. Pray that prayer. And you're saved from a devil's hell and you have a home in heaven. God bless you, my friends. Let us learn not to grumble. Let us learn to all oh, shine as lights in this world and to shine by holding forth the word of life. Amen. And amen.